What's up everyone? How's it going today? Hope everyone's enjoying their weekend. As you can see, I am back in the garage and today I'm wearing some work clothing because today I'm actually gonna have to get a little dirty because today I'm gonna have to climb under the Jeep to do a little work on the AccuAir three and a half inch dynamic lift kit. The last video that we did for this kit is the one gear review video. If you have not seen that video, make sure to click on the link above to check it out for yourself. But in that video, I discussed my likes and dislikes to the system, as well as we took a look at the components to see how they're wearing after one year of use. Unfortunately, we did notice some minor issues. In particular, we noticed that the skid plate for the air management system was starting to rust pretty badly. And we noticed that the air tank had a lot of water in it, which was kind of surprising because the system is supposed to have an automatic purge valve that is supposed to prevent the water from building up in the tank. So a couple days after I posted that video, Acura ended up contacting me to discuss the issues that I highlighted in more depth. For a few of the issues, they said, look, we know it exists, but unfortunately at this time, we don't have a solution and we are still working on figuring out how to fix it. But for the skid plate and the water in the tank, they said they're gonna send me two replacement parts to solve those two issues. The first replacement part that they sent me is this new skid plate for the air management system. I am hoping and assuming that this was manufactured correctly so that the powder coating will actually stick to the metal so that we can possibly have this not rust as fast as the previous one did. The second part they sent me is a new purge valve. I guess Acura is assuming that my purge valve on my Jeep is defective, which is causing me to have water in the tank. So I'm hoping by installing this new purge valve, my system will actually be able to automatically purge out the water. I did want to mention that Acura's customer service was really good at this and acted really quick on getting me the parts. I actually ended up getting these parts back in February, but didn't go ahead with the installation at that time. The reason I didn't go ahead with that installation was mainly due to the fact that my workspace or my parking space is open to the elements. And I really didn't want to have to go under my Jeep and do this type of installation when the weather was cold, especially due to the fact that this insulation is most likely going to have some water involved. So now that the weather is better and it's a lot warmer, I decided I'm going to get these parts installed. The installation should be fairly straightforward. All I'm going to have to do is pull the skid plate down, remove the air management system, put that all onto the new plate with the new purge, and then put it all back up. Should be fairly straightforward and shouldn't take too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into that and then we'll come back to wrap this video up.
So guys, as you can see, I've got the new skid plate installed along with the new purge valve. Overall, the installation went as expected, but I do want to note that the way I did it was definitely the more difficult approach. The easier approach would have been to simply disconnect all the air lines, then remove the skid plate along with the air management system, take that over to a bench, swap everything over, and then come back and reinstall it. The approach I took was actually just to remove the skid plate, leaving the air management system still connected to the Jeep, and then I reinstalled the new skid plate. The reason I did it this way was for two reasons. First is because I'm actually working on the ground and not on a lift or any jacks. So I knew that as soon as I went ahead and disconnected the air management system, the vehicle would have lowered down, making the space under the Jeep a lot tighter, and it would have been a lot more difficult to get that skid plate out. The second reason is because I've already gone ahead and troubleshooted all my leaks. So I know that my air system is perfect. And I was really concerned that if I went ahead and disconnected everything, that it probably wouldn't have gone back together. And I would have to recheck all the lines to find any possible leaks. And so I just didn't want to deal with that. So the only thing I was not able to remove from the old skid plate was the old purge valve. Unfortunately, because these two bolts holding in place had already started to corrode, as soon as I put a tool onto these bolts, I ended up just stripping both the bolts. This is not that big of a deal because I was already planning to replace this with the new purge valve, so I didn't actually need to remove it. But the issue I had was that the new purge valve did not come with any bolts. So there's no way for me to attach the new one to the new skid plate because I couldn't get those two bolts off. For now, what I've done is I've just left it free. I haven't secured it. I don't think it's gonna be bit that big of an issue because I think this is just holding in place. It doesn't really affect the performance. Eventually, I will have to acquire some new bolts to go there, but for now, we're gonna to have to leave it as is. So besides the purge valve, everything else came off the old skid plate just fine. And once I had all the components off that skid plate, I was actually able to see how bad of a shape it was actually in. As you can see, the powder coating was no longer sticking to the metal. It was simply just flaking off. And then as a result, all the exposed metal was starting to rust. Look, I know that this is a metal skid plate and it goes under the Jeep and eventually it will rust. But this skid plate looked like it was five years old, where really it's only been on the Jeep for less than a year and a half. I really hope that the new skid plate that Acura has provided was manufactured correctly. My understanding is that the old one was cut with the wrong type of cutting process. And as a result, the powder coating would not stick to it. Hopefully they fix that. And hopefully the new skid plate will last a lot longer than this one has. As you can see, the new skid plate looks great. But the only thing I wanted to mention was the fact that the new skid plate did not come with the two L brackets. I really wish they had provided them because as you can see, these two L brackets were obviously cut with the wrong cutting process, similar to the old skid plate. So the powder coating has already started to rust. Very disappointing that these did not come with it. I'm sure if I contact Acura, they'll be able to send me these two brackets and I'll be able to do this all over again. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that I have noticed that all the hardware bolts are also starting to corrode a little bit. I would have liked that they had a better corrosion resistance because they are exposed to the elements under the Jeep. So besides those minor issues, everything about the replacement parts seems to be working just fine. And I look forward to seeing how they do over time. This video was not only about me showing you how to install those parts, it was also about me showing you guys how good Acura's customer service is and how the brand stands behind the products they sell. I know for a fact that I was actually one of the first people to buy one of the first production kits for this system. And of course, like any new product that comes to market, there's always gonna be some type of hiccup or issue that needs to be addressed. And for myself, I was ready for this and I was super excited to be a part of this because I wanted to be able to test this system out, find those issues, provide the brand with my feedback and see how they fix them. I also want to do this because I wanted to be able to create the content so that I could share my overall experience of the product and the brand with you guys. So really it was just a matter of time before Acura would have some type of replacement part available that I could put on the Jeep to solve some of the issues that I had with the original kit. I recently discovered that Acura has actually evolved their dynamic lift kit. One of my friends recently purchased this kit and installed it on his Jeep JL. 
and when I was looking at all the components, I noticed a slight difference. I'm not sure if any of them had a performance difference, but cosmetically, they were definitely not the same. This is great to see because what this shows is it shows that Acura is actually continuing to evolve their product to make it better for the end consumer. I'm hoping in the future I can actually do a video with my friend's Jeep and we can compare all the components to see what differences they've made and if they've changed anything that changes the performance of the kit. But that is going to be on a future video. For today's video, I'm going to be wrapping this up. But before I do so, I do want to thank Acura because not only did they provide me with the placement parts, but they also provided me with a discount code for my viewers, which means you can now use the code Evolve Jeeping on the Acura website to save yourself 10% off any of the products they sell. So if you are thinking about getting yourself a dynamic lift kit for either a JL, JT, or JK, you can now save yourself a good chunk of change by using that code. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below and I'll do the best to answer them. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And please guys, make sure to keep evolving your rigs and we'll see you guys on the next video.